I'm here with Lee Leachman I'm up in Wellington, Colorado for another session of uh, No Better Bull. And today we wanted to talk about breed complementarity. And we've talked about uh, hybrid vigor and heterosis in the, in the cow herd and some of the benefits there. And, and yet just crossing breeds uh, just kind of at random is not necessarily the best idea. So I wonder if you could just explain a little bit about what we mean by breed complementarity. The, the concept of complementarity, John, revolves around the idea that for the traits that we want, combining certain breeds is better than combining other breeds. The classic example of this is if you're in the southeastern United States and you need cattle that are acclimated to the subtropical regions of the country, if you just go in there with Angus, those cattle don't adapt. If you cross with Brahmin, the resulting hybrids are well adapted. That's an example of complementarity. The one breed complements the other. I've heard some people say that th these days with uh, the, the, the kind of breeding that we've seen and in, in, you know, the kind of selection that we've seen in, in the breeds that they're all so similar in, uh, in their uh, physical traits that maybe there really isn't much to be gained. It's true in some traits. If we look at growth rate and size, it used to be that the continental breeds that came from continental Europe were heavier muscled and bigger framed and higher growth. Today, the Angus cattle and Hereford cattle have really caught them on growth, but those muscle compositional differences still exist. In other words, if, if I visit a rancher who has straight British cows and he asks me what would be a good complement, well, if he's feeding those calves, typically those straight British calves might get fat too early and not have quite enough muscle to feed the heavier market weights. And so then I'd say put Continental in those cows and that's a complementation. The same is true the other way. If I find a herd that's mostly Continental, I say, well, you know, gosh, these cattle might not marble the way we want them to marble. Put Angus or Red Angus on those Continental breeds to make them marble. And so certainly still big differences on complementarity, perhaps not on growth, but certainly on the other traits, the carcass traits, um, still big differences on milk production, still big differences on calving ease. You know, that's why people use an Angus on their heifers. I mean, that's an example of complementarity. You're using a breed difference to accomplish something in your, in your herd. Regardless of the breed of your cows, you still just put that Angus in on your heifers and get that predictable calving ease. So there are still big differences there, big advantages to complementarity. So where are some of the biggest opportunities for, for producers based on uh, you know, the, the current genetic makeup of their herds to, uh, to benefit from co complementarity in their, in their selection? Well, I think that uh, there's a couple of things out there. Obviously, the marketplace today is demanding a higher percentage of choice. I mean, we're seeing, you know, retailers responding to the value of choice product. And so we've seen a dramatic increase in the usage of Angus, and appropriately so, because the Angus breed, from a complementarity standpoint, adds marbling to any other cross almost. I mean, unless you have Jersey cows, Angus are going to add marbling, or Wagyu, Jersey or Wagyu. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, Angus are going to add marbling to your cross. Now, we, we see some producers who maybe overshot the runway on that and have gone too British. And uh, I, I think if you ask feedlots across the country and packers, who ultimately are customers, you know, red meat yield and muscularity and carcass weight are drivers. And they're going to be increasingly so as, as, as cattle numbers shrink and the packer still wants the same or more beef. He's going to feed these cattle to heavier levels. If you put a little bit of continental in there, the muscle composition and leanness of a quarter or three-eighths or even half continental is more optimal to feeding to the heavy weights that we are looking at today. And so, you know, there's, there's a great complementation. Angus for the marbling, the continental breeds, a tick of that to get to the carcass weight without producing an extreme percentage of yield grade fours.